I'm Steve from This Up With Cars, and this is my electric car from the 1980s. Yesterday, I took the next steps into making this a reliable commuter car, but things didn't go as planned. Here, take a look. I ordered a new set of tires for the Electra yesterday, and they already arrived from the tire rack. I ended up getting some hand-cooked Kinergy STs. These are in the size 17570R13. Well, I put the new tires on. I decided to take the car for a little drive. I just made it down the street and I'm almost back to my shop, but the car died. I coasted for as far as I could. Now I've pulled over and I'm trying to fix it. I heard a little zap sound in the back when it happened. And looking back here, looks like one of my terminals melted right off of my battery. This cable's really hot. It's really the only one that is that way. So I'm not sure why that cable got hot. I guess there's a couple others that are hot as well. Seems to be. Seems to be only three of them got hot. But looks like I melted the terminal right off of this battery right here. The good thing about this setup is I can just bypass this battery and keep on going. So to bypass this battery, all I need to do is move this cable so that it mounts right here with this one. And that'll make a path from here over to this battery. And this is one of the things that they touted uh, originally on these cars is that if you had a problem with one of your batteries, you can just get out and bypass it real quick and you could drive it that way for quite a while without having to deal with your old battery. And your car is still gonna function in every way, you'll just lose a slight amount of range. Things have gotten even worse now. A thunderstorm is moving in. It's mostly lightning, there is no rain yet, but I need to get back before I get struck by lightning sitting out here in the middle of nowhere. I am moving again. My headlights have also quit working, but I hope my connection is good enough to make it back to the shop. I don't have to go very far, but I'll have to wait till there are no longer any other cars on the road. I made it back. I guess I'll see you tomorrow when I take a better look at this. So here's what I think happened. My headlights stopped working, probably because the fuse box is not very good on this car. There's a little fuse box that's in the engine bay that takes power from the 12 volt battery and supplies it to the 12 volt circuits of the car. My lights went out just before I encountered a roundabout. And to beat another car around the roundabout, I accelerated pretty quickly, and then I kept accelerating down the road to try to get back to the shop as soon as I could. I think it was that driving that heated up the cable so much that it melted the terminal right off the battery. I think there's some adjustments I can make on the motor controller to keep this from happening, but I need to fix a few other issues before I look at that. I didn't have any tools with me last night. This end was already disconnected. This is the bolt that's actually inside these terminals. And what I did is I just jammed this cable just like that. Kind of set this one against it to hold it there. And this was enough of a connection to enable me to drive back to the shop. If I had any tools with me, obviously the proper way would have been to undo this nut and add this wire onto this terminal here. Looks like this nut has become welded to this bolt. So even, even if I had tools, I wouldn't have been able to do this.
So today I went in, I bought a bunch more wire and a whole bunch of terminal ends. And I'm gonna make a few new cables to replace a few of these, if not all of them. One theory I have is that there was so much battery acid on this car when I got it, that maybe it's crept up through some of these cables and rotted them out on the inside. And that's why it was only a couple of them that felt hot. And surprisingly, it was all the, the ones that are not very long in length. But I definitely know that some of these cables have had more exposure to battery acid than others. And it's probably well past time that this car got a set of new cables. Up here is the problematic fuse panel. If I wiggle some of these, you can see there's my parking lights right there. I take this off, bring it over here. Now I've got my headlights back and uh, the, the fuse panel is just literally falling apart. I've already bypassed one of these fuses, this one here, and uh, I've put a modern fuse in line there. And this one runs the main circuit that turns the main drive motors on and off. It looks like I'm going to have to update the fuse panel over here. There's a set of five of these that I'll have to add modern fuses in if I want this to be reliable. Now I should have reliable lights. One of the first things that's noticeable when driving this car at night is that the lights dim when you hit the accelerator pedal and they get brighter when you let off of it. That's opposite of an internal combustion engine car where the generator would be charging more the more throttle you give it. I was anxious to try to drive the Electra home again, and of course, I had a problem again. I fried another battery terminal, and this time it actually burnt a hole straight into the battery there. I do have tools with me. I'm gonna bypass that battery as well. And see if I can get home. Here's what I've done now. I've eliminated all the cables that I felt were hot and that means I had to get rid of this battery, which is bad, obviously. This battery, which melted before, got rid of that battery, and I got rid of the last battery. So I'm down four batteries right now. Hopefully this is good enough to get me home. I'm back on the road now. At least my lights are working this time. Well, I did make it home last night. I'm driving back to the shop. I'm, uh, about 50 miles an hour is all that I can go right now. I have four batteries deleted from my battery bank. And in third gear, about 200 amps is the most that they can put out right now. I'll be really glad if I make it back. I have a lot of work to do to try to figure this out. This is the last big hill that I'm going to have to traverse. I have my foot to the floor. It's drawing 200 amps in third gear. Like I made it, it's all downhill from here. I'm not real sure what's going on with these batteries. I don't know if my theory about the cables being bad is correct now. Maybe a case that they don't make batteries like they used to. One thing I'm thinking about is if I use a terminal like this, maybe I can double up my cables to provide two places for it to connect to the batteries, hopefully preventing it from melting this area anymore. Maybe something like what I'm thinking already exists and I just don't know it. So if you do know or have any other ideas, uh, comment in the comments below. I drove back to the shop with a total of four batteries disconnected from the system and the car still drove here just fine. So I think I'm going to take this opportunity to see what voltage I'm running at right now, now that I've taken a trip of about 20, 25 miles and doing that without for my batteries for over half that trip. See what voltage we're at right now. And this will give us a good idea of how much discharge the car will still be running at. So it looks like we're down to about 85 volts and the car was still running fine. You could only pull about 200 amps in third gear going up a hill. 
but still perfectly drivable that way. So this tells me if I have all my batteries connected and I discharge them to 80%, which would be about 90 volts, I should notice very little performance difference in the car. I just need to find a way to reliably get the power in and out of the batteries without melting them down. I made it back to the shop and since today has been all about discovering information, I thought I would finally scale the car. So I have my scale zeroed right now, pull the car on and we'll find out how much this finally weighs. So it looks like the car comes in at 3,094 pounds. It almost has a 50-50 weight distribution. It is 51.87% with 1.87% heavier on the front. I'm sure this weighs quite a bit more than the typical Nissan and is probably a lot of weight for what size tires this car has on it. Well, I don't think I've had that many breakdowns go bad in a single video before. If you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe. Yeah. <laughs>